Hi, this is Dr. P. Thanks for tuning in. In case you didn't know, I post weekly videos on how to self-manage musculoskeletal pain. These are things like neck pain, low back pain. I also research therapeutic devices that can be used at home in treating a painful condition. Of course, this is no substitute for seeing your doctor. You should always consult with your doctor if you have a serious uh, medical condition. But the reality is for the vast majority of everyday sprains and strains, body aches, pain affecting the joints and so forth, th these are things that can be managed at home. Now today I'm going to talk about wrist pain tendinitis. This refers to conditions that involve swelling and pain of the tendons in the wrist. It's primarily caused by poor ergonomics, which means poor posture, poor workstation setup, in combination with overuse. Research shows that it affects women more frequently than men, and it's not clear on why that's the case. Regardless, I'll show you what you can do to eliminate this pain. So just a little bit about the anatomy of the wrist. You've got the flexor tendons, and these are the two large tendons that pop up when you make a fist and bend your wrist inwards. Most of the things we do with our hands involve gripping, so that particular tendon, those tendons are used predominantly over the, the extensor, extensor ones. These tendons, since they're in close proximity, have tendinous sheaths and bursae, which are structures that reduce the friction. So anywhere where there's uh, a tendon that's near a bone, adjacent to a joint, you're going to find bursa there. With carpal tunnel syndrome and tendonitis, this, this bursa or the tendinous sheaths are inflamed, they're swollen, and they've lost their ability to reduce the friction. Maybe you're typing a lot, maybe you're gripping a lot, and you're overcoming the body's ability to uh, deal with those forces. When that swelling persists in the carpal tunnel, it can compress the median nerve, which can result in numbness and tingling in your hand and fingertips. And that's not a good thing because whenever you get numbness and tingling, we're talking about nerve compression. Nerve tissue doesn't regenerate very well, so if you're having any neurological symptoms, you definitely want to remove that pressure as soon as you can because it's possible to have permanent effects. So viewers of my channel probably know that I'm an advocate for using red light therapy. When I research medical devices, I, I look for two things. Number one, if there's research, does research back it up? And number two, uh, anecdotal evidence. Is there evidence from users that the thing works? Red light therapy meets both of those criteria. This is why it's one of the ones, one of the few modalities that I recommend. The device I'm gonna demonstrate in this video is the 60 LED red light therapy wrap. LED stands for light emitting diode. You could see there's 60 of them here. They emanate uh, two wavelengths of light. The 660 nanometer is the photobiomodulatory wavelength. It could increase the ATP synthesis of mitochondria, which are the structures and cells that give it energy. And it also interferes with the inflammatory biochemical pathway, very much like a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug does. So it has that effect. The 850 nanometer wavelength is near infrared. It penetrates deeper than the 660 and it heats. That increases or vasodilates the blood vessels, which means more oxygen, more nutrients, and more waste product removal. So the combination of 850 plus 660 is ideal for reducing soft tissue pain, for rehabilitating soft tissue injury. So I'm gonna show you how to use this. This is the main wrap. It's made of hypoallergenic fabric. It's got a removable cover because when you use this a lot, you know, people sweat, you have body oils, it could get a little bit dirty here. And if it reaches that level, just take it off, wash it under warm water and soap, let it squeeze it out and let it dry. And it's nice and fresh and clean again. All right. It comes with this controller. I'll show you how that works in a minute. And also this elastic band to help hold it in place. You'll notice I have this AC adapter, USB. It does not come with that. You'll have to get one your own. Most people have one because they charge their phones with these things. So here's how it works. 
Oh, I should mention it has a little pocket for a battery pack. So if you get one of those little battery packs, those are sold separately. You could use it, uh, it'll be portable. So take the controller, it's got a pin end and a USB end, and insert it into the rack like this. Take the other end and insert it into the USB wall adapter. Make sure it's 5 volts DC, 2.1 amperes. It's very important that you just use the 5 volts DC, 2.1 amperes. Don't try to use anything else because it may damage the unit. So plug that in and plug it into an AC outlet. And you'll see the red light indicator come on. It's, it says off right now. So this is a little tricky, especially if you're by yourself uh, as far as putting it on. What I found for the best way to do this is to go ahead and you know bend it like this. And by the way, do not roll this up really tightly. Okay, the most you want to roll up an LED wrap is is like this. If you roll it up tighter than that, you may damage the circuitry inside. So it is flexible and it could take some bending, but don't overdo it. Then I'm going to take this elastic band, put it around it like this. So I have this, and then I'm going to push it through my wrist. Please be aware that this LED wrap is not intended to be a compress. So don't go crazy trying to put really tight. All right, so it should be loose like that. Now, if you have skinnier wrists, uh, just, just overlap a little bit more, but same thing, make the tube first. That's the easiest way to do it. And then uh, press the on button. Okay, a little close up view. It's off at this point. You press the power button. You'll see all, which means both the 660 and 850 nanometer uh, LEDs are on. You press this button here and you could increase the intensity from one to five. Press this button here for the time. It goes up in intervals of five minutes all the way up to 30 minutes. I'll press this again and um, this allows you to choose between the LEDs, but it's best to keep them all on. Now, while the unit is on and you press the power button again, you could convert it to pulsed mode. This is 10 hertz, that's 40 hertz, and this is sinusoidal, this H, and you'll see how it uh, oscillates from uh, no power to full power. This kind of guards against cell accommodation. Now if you have the battery pack, you could stick the USB instead of the wall adapter into the battery pack and just stick it under the elastic band. This wrap is also great for treating sprained ankles. So after you ice uh, your ankle while it's in the acute phase, you could do this red light therapy in between and you'll heal it probably in half the time. If you've got wrist pain, tendonitis, carpal tunnel syndrome, tenosynovitis, I forgot to mention that, the pain on the side of the wrist, this is a great device to have at home to self-treat it on demand. It'll save a lot of money, won't have to resort to drugs. It works beautifully. So that's it, thanks for watching. If you know someone who's suffering from wrist pain, please forward them this video. It's all about trying to spread the information and uh, getting people well, helping them feel better. For more information on this product, just click the button in the upper right corner of your screen. It'll take you to my website and it'll have more information there for you.